Well, hey there, it's Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I am going to be painting some fall leaves that I found over on Paint My Photo. Great place to get photo references. I just loved the idea of painting just leaves and relaxing with it, doing some negative painting, getting back into watercoloring. I've been doing pen and ink work for the month of October and I'm ready to move on to other mediums. And hopefully this will be a little bit of relaxation for you as well. Lots of repetitive steps, but I'll put on some music when I run out of things to say. All right, let's get started. So I began with the sketch and I wasn't really worried about making every single leaf exactly as it was in the photograph. All I really wanted was some shapes in here that would keep me on track for the size of the leaves. I ended up, by the time I was all done, not really making every leaf exactly as it was sketched out. But it helped me to have one big hero leaf, like in the photograph, and then a bunch of small ones around it and it looks like it was a like single type of tree above wherever these leaves had fallen. So most of them are around the same size. And that was really what I did the sketching for. Could have done this without a sketch entirely. But I'm dropping in some, let's see, I started with Hansa Yellow Light. I added some New Gamboge and then Anthraquinoid Scarlet. And then decided to try doing something with Lunar Blue. Lunar blue is a color that is more of a grayish blue color than anything, but it does some beautiful mixing things. It granulates in lovely ways. And I'm just letting the paint mix on the paper. Some of the leaves I targeted with a blob of paint, but for the most part, I just want it to swirl around. Once it was all completely dry, I started carving into the shapes that were here. And that's where I'm creating leaf shapes by painting over big sections using the same three colors and just going back and forth between them so that the green mix that is made from the yellow with the lunar blue mixes with the lunar blue with the red in it and then the red and the yellow so i'm basically mixing the tertiary colors the ones in between the red blue and yellow in the color wheel with the three colors that i started the painting out with and that way i'm going to get some nice blends as it moves right across the surface of all this other pigment when anytime i came across a leaf that i thought was particularly beautiful in the colors that were in that first pass I left those leaves and just painted around some of the other shapes. I find the exercise of negative painting to be very relaxing, especially when it's something forgiving like leaves. I know a lot of people find it very frustrating and very difficult, but for me, it's just very slowly revealing which of the leaves are coming to the surface, which ones are gonna be on top, and then pushing back all the other ones. If you can think about it like laying a sheet of tissue paper over top of the ones underneath, then it can start to feel like you're adding a whole bunch of different layers into the painting that are eventually going to build up. But don't give up early. Right now it looks a little bit like a hot mess in a few places and that's okay. That's intentional and I'm going to keep making more and more dark areas that are going to start creating all that depth.
Now I'm using a lot more pigment in this layer to start really carving in some serious shapes. And they can be very small shapes, they can be very big shapes, depending on what I want to create in each section. And again, I'm not going back to look at that photo other than looking for interesting shapes that I see and just squinting at the photo to see where are those dark shapes. You know, how do they transition from one color to another? And there are some other colors in the photograph. There's kind of a cobalt blue kind of color that indicates the water. There's some reflections from the sky onto the water. I decided to just ignore the water because really all I wanted to do was these beautiful leaves and that's okay. Don't feel like you have to replicate photo exactly because you've chosen that photo. You can do the thing that interests you the most. And for me, it was just this cacophony of leaves, that really big hero leaf in, on the top of all of them, and then just letting all of these shapes start to form little by little. Some of the areas, while they're wet, are perfect for dropping in some really thick color. And I'm just going to be putting in some of the lunar blue into those wet areas while they're still damp so that I get some softer edges. That's going to give me a mix of edges and shapes that are going to naturally form from all of the color that's just dropped into each other. And then when I see a leaf that needs to be pulled up higher, I can put a little shadow underneath of it as I'm doing this next layer and always conscious of figuring out how I'm going to separate each of the leaves. But you don't have to do all that in one layer. You can just go back over and over and over again to build them up. And the thinner you use the paint during each one of those layers, the more layers you have to start building it up. But it's also possible to get very muddy very quickly. But when you're talking about leaves, they're muddy anyway. So this is kind of the perfect subject to practice your negative painting. what your fall has been like wherever it is that you live. I live in western Washington and it's been quite beautiful. We've had some gorgeous crisp fall days. We've had some very dreary fall days. We've had days when the wind has come through and threatened to blow all the leaves away. And I have had one struggle which is finding time to get outside to paint when the weather is decent. Because it seems like when I have the time, the weather is just, just terrible. It's rainy or cold, and I am kind of a fair weather plein air painter. And as soon as there's a nice gorgeous day, I unfortunately am swamped with things to do. <laughs> and this painting happened because I was trying really hard to get out and paint this week. And I had one day when it was gorgeous, and I had to get the yard mode. I just... I couldn't not do it because the forecast said we were going to have several days in a row of serious rain. So I had to get that done. I used my one good day to do that and I just didn't have the time to get out and paint. So that is why I decided to paint leaves because I'm getting out my, my fall excitement here on just being able to paint leaves even if I couldn't get outside to paint full trees. But I do hope to maybe get out and do something in the next few days once this weather breaks and things get a little better. We'll see how that goes. But I also have been collecting photographs, um, asking a lot of photographers that I'm meeting on threads if I can use their photos because lots of local photographers are out there 
taking absolutely stunning, stunning photos. And they're doing the things like hiking out to really remote places, which I would never do anyway, because that's just not me. I'm usually looking for more domesticated places to do my painting and I've got some great photo references. So hopefully I will get to do some great fall paintings here on YouTube and over on social media. In this final pass on this painting, I'm going to be putting in the details and not details in every leaf. It would be possible to sit and put every pockmark on a leaf and make every one of them look hyper realistic. And that might be a, an approach to take. This main leaf has an interesting curl to it. It kind of spins around a little bit. And I wanted to put some of those nice dark shadows that are going to make that one start to really pop as if it's in the front because it is in the photograph that was one of the things that attracted me to it Then I'm going to be using a lot of the same colors, staying with the same palette to start pushing back some of the other leaves. And when I do that, I'm going to be doing some with just, you know, coverage of paint and pushing them further back. But others, I'm going to put some vein work in, just a very, very little bit of it. Sometimes just painting over half of a leaf and allowing just the tip of something to stick out into the light. So little by little, I'm just gonna carve into each one of these, looking for places where there's two leaves next to each other and deciding which one I wanna push forward, which one I wanna pull backward and try to see which one is the one that's gonna get the treatment to it. Cause some of the leaves I wanna leave with nothing on them, just that original color that went down on the paper in that very first pass and just slowly build up all these other layers. You can see little by little, the leaves have just started to create a push and pull, a, a change in depth that is making all of it look more dimensional as each one of them is altered just a very slight bit. The big open places that just gets really dark is the part that actually makes the lighter areas look lighter. So if you try this, make sure you have some really rich darks because those are going to be what's going to create all that dimension for you. Uh, one thing that was going to go live today that I will let some of you know, you've been waiting, I know, anxiously for me to open my commission window for commission applications. And I just want you to know it's not quite ready yet. I'm trying to do some samples of the kinds of work that I want to do as commissions. And I basically am not finished yet because I'm waiting on some paper to arrive because I want to try one really large one and get an idea of what that would take so that if somebody says, I want a really big painting, I can kind of tell you how big I can work in pastel because most of what I'm gonna be doing for commissions will be in pastels. And I know I haven't done, I think I've done one pastel video here, perhaps one. 
I have been working like mad in the background without you getting to see all of it as I've been really practicing with the medium and commissions are going to be in that. But uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a future video. The sketchbook that I'm working in, by the way, is by Lake Michigan Book Press. It's a one woman shop where she hand makes all of the sketchbooks. And I have been saying for years, I'm gonna get through this, this sketch a day book, like there's so many pages in it, but I am well past halfway. And I'm hoping that maybe, maybe in the near future, I'll finish off this entire sketchbook, it would be great. And I want to get a new one because it's been a lot of fun to do, but I will put a link to her website in the doobly do. She'll put whatever kind of paper you want in a sketchbook, but I want you to remember that the reason that most companies don't make sketchbooks with arches paper like this is because of the cost. If you think about how much paper you'd have to have to make a sketchbook with good watercolor paper, that is why you can't find very many of them in stores because they know how much we won't pay for a sketchbook off the shelf. But I love that Lake Michigan Book Press makes handmade sketchbooks with whatever paper you want. And this is the sketch a day that has like tons and tons of paper in it. So it is expensive, but you can get smaller ones if you want a sketchbook with arches in it. So that's about it for me. I will see you guys again very soon, hopefully with more watercolor because I have missed it while I was doing all that pen and ink. I'll see you again very soon. I'll put a couple of videos here on the screen if you're interested in more paintings like this. See you later. Bye-bye.